Hi, welcome to a lecture on sensitivity. In general, sensitivity is defined as the power which is applied to the input of a system that is required to achieve a specified signal to noise ratio. And that's at a detector which is within the system. So for a receiver, the picture you should have in mind is something like this. We have a desired signal which we'll express as the copolarized incident power density. And in this case, we'll define power density as density in both area and frequency, so watts per square meter per hertz. And the other input to the system is external noise, which we will represent using the antenna temperature, T sub A. And to turn that into a power density, we'll multiply by Boltzmann's constant, K. That's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd joules per Kelvin. That gives us a power density watts per hertz. Now the signal and noise are received through the antenna, and here we'll characterize the antenna in terms of its effective aperture, or equivalently its directivity. We'll also account for the fact that the antenna has a radiation efficiency associated with it, which accounts for losses due to power dissipated within the antenna. That's typically due to lossy materials. The output of the antenna goes to the receiver. Now, the receiver is measuring the signal using a lossless linear detector, which observes the signal and noise together. And it is at the input of this detector that we're interested in measuring the signal and noise ratio. Now, to characterize the performance of the receiver, we'll define G sub Rx to be the gain of the receiver. B sub Rx to be the bandwidth of the receiver, and T sub Rx to be the input referred equivalent noise temperature of the receiver. So this could also be expressed in terms of a noise figure, right, whichever is more convenient. But in this case, it's more convenient to talk about equivalent noise temperature. So in order to quantify sensitivity, we need to determine the signal and the noise because we want the signal and noise ratio. So let's start off with the signal. Here is the input signal, power density, watts per meter squared per hertz. It comes into the antenna as described above. The power that's delivered to the receiver, assuming perfect impedance matching, so no loss in the input match, we would have the input power density times the effective aperture times the radiation efficiency. And this is processed through the receiver and as it arrives at the detector, we would have that quantity multiplied by the bandwidth, which now gives us watts, and then multiplied by the gain of the receiver. That's the signal. That's the numerator of the signal-to-noise ratio. Now, in the denominator, we have all the noise. And the noise comes in two components, internal and external. Let's first consider the internal noise. The internal noise is the noise associated with the receiver itself. And we have defined that equivalent noise temperature of the receiver to be input referred. That means that the number we specify for that is the number which corresponds to noise arriving at the input and then multiplied by the gain of the receiver. If it were output referred, then we wouldn't have to multiply by the gain of the receiver. So it's important to specify. Almost always do we define this as being input referred in which case, we may imagine that the noise due to the receiver actually originates at the input of the receiver. So the power density is K times the equivalent noise temperature. And so that the power arriving at the detector is that input power times the bandwidth, which converts it into watts, times the gain. So that's internal noise. For external noise, we have... K times the antenna temperature going through the antenna. So arriving at the input of the receiver is K times T sub A diminished by the radiation efficiency of the antenna. That power then goes through the receiver, is multiplied by the gain and the bandwidth. So we obtain KTA epsilon sub rad times the bandwidth times the gain, and that's the external noise.
Putting this all together, the signal-noise ratio is a ratio of signal to external noise plus internal noise. So there is the signal expression we obtained above. There is the internal noise expression that we obtained above. There is the external noise expression that we obtained above. There's a lot of cancellation, namely the bandwidths and the gains of the receiver cancel out. So we obtain this expression. Now in this expression, we can factor out Boltzmann's constant in the denominator, leaving this expression, T sub Rx plus T sub A times the radiation efficiency of the antenna. Note that this is the total effect of the noise, and it's referred to the output of the antenna. T sub A times epsilon rad is the antenna temperature diminished by the antenna. And then T sub Rx is the input referred equivalent noise temperature of the receiver. So this is the total effect of the noise referred to the output of the antenna. Now it's common instead to think of this as being referred to the input of the entire system, including the antenna. That is, at the input of the antenna, not the output of the antenna. So that motivates us to define system temperature, or T sub cis, which we define to be the total effect of noise referred to the input of the system, that is, the input of the antenna. So here, T cis is just this quantity divided by the radiation efficiency, because that gives us the appropriate quantity at the input of the antenna. So simply multiplying through here, we get T sub A, the antenna temperature, plus the equivalent noise temperature of the receiver divided by the radiation efficiency of the antenna. That's system temperature. So now we can write SNR as copolarized signal power density times effective aperture divided by KT cis, and the radiation efficiency that's left over in the numerator and denominator cancel out. Radiation efficiency still matters, but it's been built into the definition of system temperature. So we obtain that signal noise ratio is the copolarized signal power density divided by Boltzmann's constant times this factor, effective aperture divided by system temperature, AE over T cis. Now this factor, AE over T cis, serves as a convenient alternative definition of sensitivity. Recall, originally we said sensitivity is the power required to achieve a certain signal noise ratio. But here we see that AE over T cis is everything we need to determine signal to noise ratio. So it doesn't require a specification of an SNR. So it is often convenient to describe the sensitivity of the system as being AE over T cis. Be clear, it's an arbitrary definition but it's a useful one because it contains all the factors describing the system that determine its SNR. And note the units here will be meters squared per Kelvin. Now there's another way to specify sensitivity, and that's in terms of the directivity of the antenna, as opposed to the effective aperture of the antenna. And the reason is because effective aperture and directivity are related by lambda squared over 4 pi. So we can take the effective aperture and the expression for signal noise ratio and make the substitution. And we obtain this expression, copolarized power density divided by Boltzmann's constant, times lambda squared divided by four pi, times directivity divided by T cis. Now, directivity is simply the gain of the antenna divided by the radiation efficiency. Nevertheless, people often refer to directivity and gain of the antenna as being the same thing. So informally, this is referred to as G over T, that is antenna gain divided by system temperature. But let's be clear, the way we've derived this and the way we've defined the quantities, G over T here is antenna directivity divided by system temperature as defined above. The units of G over T would be inverse Kelvins. Often that's expressed in decibels. So you'd get dB relative to inverse Kelvins. In other words, you take 10 log 10 of this quantity and express it with those units. Although I'll say informally, it's often expressed as dB divided by K. Now, of course, literally, that's ridiculous, but that's a shorthand for saying dB relative to inverse Kelvins. So they mean the same thing, and you kind of have to understand that that's a shorthand expression. So to summarize, there are three ways to quantify sensitivity. 
One is to give the power density required to achieve a specified signal to noise ratio. In that case, you need to say both what that copolarized signal power density is and for what signal to noise ratio that results in a detection. Alternatively, you can express sensitivity as AE over T-cis because that factor includes everything that's necessary to determine signal to noise ratio. And in fact, signal to noise ratio is proportional to this quantity. Alternatively, you can say G over T, which is the directivity of the antenna divided by the system temperature. All right, that's informally known as G over T. And the second thing to know is that system temperature is a term that's widely used. It's typically defined as being the input referred system temperature, which is the antenna temperature characterizing the external noise, plus input referred equivalent noise temperature of the receiver divided by the radiation efficiency of the antenna. That concludes this lecture on sensitivity.